Hi, and welcome to the Reset for Success show. Today's topic is hot. Hot marriage secrets and friendships on fire. I'm Marion LaSalle, and my co-hosts today are Lady Lou and Rick and Tina. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, thank you, Marion. This is going to be a topic that's going to be so much fun because in the before the show came on just now, we were talking about all the good stuff they're going to be talking about. And it's Rick and Tina Kane. And they Tina's been on with us once before and had a wonderful show. And now she's there with her husband, Rick. And we're going to talk about their hot marriage and other friendships that are on fire. So take it away, guys, and let's hear what you have to say. Hi there, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us, Marion and Lady Lou. Thanks so much for reaching out and uh, including us in your platform, your fabulous platform, Thank where we you. know you're on purpose about just um, looking at all the different ways to give people the opportunity to make new associations and inspirations and revelations, all of that thing, all of those things. So we, we love being a part of what your movement is. Thank you. So what what it is it what is it about hot marriages that we're going to learn today because we talked about some things earlier that were really important. Yeah, I think the key at first off is just total respect for the other person. Be yourself all the time. Don't say stuff to them on one side and get out in the world with the real people and say something else. Oh. And true That's and real. That's big, all the isn't time. it? Rick, I, I understand that happens a lot happens way too much and doesn't and then if it does i don't you just don't interject with it you just walk away it's kind of like gossip it'll destroy you and you can't you can't be true that way yeah, yeah. i i had that happen to me at a networking event the owner of the event um we were meeting in their restaurant it was husband and wife and she just talked so bad about her husband. I mean, it was on and on and on. She just never quit. And I thought, that poor guy, he probably doesn't even know all these horrible things you're saying about him. It didn't look good on her. Yeah, that pretty much tells you where their marriage is headed if it's not already there. You just can't do that. No. Oh. I think, in two, uh, people think that, you know, been around a long time that you accept things. I think it's a really little things, the minor things that, can creep up on you if you're not paying attention and uh, you don't want to do that either. Yeah. I mean, it, it's true. I mean, I, I have people that I know that um, will uh, whether in person or over the phone talk smack about their spouse and, and like to the point where uh, it'll sound something like, uh, Oh my goodness. So-and-so just called. Yes. They have to work late. I'm thinking I'm, Pardon? <laughs> like you're excited <laughs> about the fact that the person you spent all this time, you know, pursuing and courting and planning a big wedding day and, and all of that, having children with and whatever, you're excited to extend how long it is until you have to see them again. <laughs> like, That's like sad. put the brakes on. Uh, if that is how a person is feeling, or verbalizing, if that's something they're verbalizing, mm -hmm. then that should be a, 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 an opportunity to stop and figure out how to go back to, you might have to back up and uh, do some uh, figuring out on what you, um, you know, how did you get there and stop that? Because that's not a good, that's not a good look. Yeah. yeah. Stop and listen to what's coming out of your own mouth. Yeah, you don't want to use work as an excuse. Now, of course, I run an air conditioning company and we do work a lot, but we do our own. We have our own company also. We, we've got several hats, but never do I go and say, oh, I'm so glad I'm at work and I can't wait when I do get back. And I just can't wait to get that hug. And let her know that it can be, oh, oh, hi, darling. No, we're going to really say hello when we meet each other. And you got to I look forward to coming home. I know, busy, but you got to do those time you get together. It's not the zillions of hours being a zillion of hours in the same house and they're in that room. You're in this room and you're not even close to each other. That really doesn't count a whole lot. So what do you do with that time, the precious time you have with each other? I remember a story Tina told us, I think it was last time 
about feeling kind of blue one day and she was out shopping and the two of you talked by phone. And then the next thing you know, she sees you coming toward her at that store. You just wanted to give her a hug so she would cheer up a little bit. That's a beautiful story. Well, it's, oh my goodness. And, and uh, what, not an isolated incident either. So um, the fact that uh, he on purpose as um, head of our household, as the leader in, um, and, and so you know, a little bit of a biblical uh, approach and assignment to how we revere each other um, is that he is very intuitive uh, because he's on purpose to be so. He could just ignore the signs, ignore the signals. It's somebody else's problem. Tina, maybe you should call your best friend. No, he is my my love and my partner. So to um, be intuitive that way, I promise on the phone, I was not a, a ball baby. It wasn't like, oh, I don't know. I just, I, I tried to. It look good on you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I tried to, uh, you know, over the phone, yeah, paint, the that, paint the picture that you know I was just doing my next thing. Well, it wasn't it wasn't uh, faking him out because, <laughs> as you say, I'm in actually you know so I'm in the big huge Costco. Which good luck finding somebody in Costco when you're like you know you went <laughs> with them. <laughs> it's like Costco, right. where are you? And I looked That's down. Right. Yeah, sure enough, I looked down at the long end of one aisle, um, and uh, I know he was on another part of town. Uh, and he just, there he was. And I was like, is that, is that Rick? What's Rick doing in Costco? Like, I need glasses, but I think that looks like my husband. No, <laughs> it is my husband. Oh my God. Well, I've got a couple of things I want to say here. First of all, we've got some um, comments coming in from Facebook and Facebook needs you to give permission so we can see who you are. I just happened to, to know who was who was talking because I went over to Facebook and it's uh, Susie Fogerson. And she's saying um, that she has a fiery marriage as well. And I know she does. She talks so very sweetly about her husband and she's, she says, you're right. Respect is a big deal. She also mm -hmm. said the universe hears when you badmouth your partner and you will think you are cursing that person. In reality, you're cursing yourself. Now, that is so true and you don't even realize it at the time you just think you're mad at your partner but that is reflecting back to you how many of us know that it's very true you said put that seed out it's coming back <laughs> yes yeah, so you reap what you sow you reap what you sow total biblical pr principle so i'm so glad that that comment um was shared yes yes very true um you know and uh the other thing i would say is that so respect respecting one another okay grab on to that idea uh great however comma respect looks like something sounds like something feels like something so being able to uh it know what that is for each other is comes because you've talked about it right like you've communicated what does respect look like to me and then listened, what does respect look like to you? So that is really important. And, um, you know, you, you'll spend all this time growing your business or uh, planning, you know, trips and all of these things. But what time is invested in growing your marriage? Rick, you talked about that earlier about, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, the vision for the marriage. Yeah, they, I mean, a lot of people say, well, we've been married a long time. Like, you're, that's permission to not have a good marriage. I mean, I think you get stronger and stronger as you go, as you're learning from each other. And I, it's our biggest compliment is when someone, we're out to dinner or somewhere else, and they say, wow, you guys are in love. I wish we could have that. And I said, well, why not? You can have it. Yeah. It's for everybody. You just got to, you got to have that date night maybe every week, which we do. Every Friday night, we have a date night. You got to keep, keep it going. And, uh, Rick and Tina, do you have any suggestions for, say, someone whose partner is not on board, who's just not getting it? You know, you ask them out for date night and they go, no, I'm busy. You know, you can tell they're just not in it. Do you have any suggestions on how to get them more involved in creating this wonderful union? So um, what I would say 
is um, so find out again, back to what, what emulates respect for that person's spouse, right? And start demonstrating that. Like a garden, I can go out and plant the seed for the tomato. So if this is a marriage that maybe they started off, um, you know, excited to see each other, excited to spend time with each other through the dating, through the beginnings of the marriage, and now they don't have that. And uh, so they're not trying to recreate a wheel. They're trying to go back and, you know, get back on that same, you know, wheel of um, uh, attraction. So if I want tomatoes, I can't go put a tomato seed in my backyard in the garden and go, great, we're having tomatoes tonight, right? <laughs> There's a lot that has to go on. You know, you first all have to look at what's the soil. And so I would say um, to not necessarily judge the success of the progression of a hot marriage by, you know, one effort to say, let's have date night and it's shut down. Start just um, acting um, and representing the way they like to see respect shown to them. And so, um, you know, if that is, uh, you find out that, wow, some something that they really love is having, um, is having dinner ready at a certain time, start showing that you're willing to um, do that, right? Like find out what it is that, turns them on and it doesn't have to always be behind the bedroom door. They get turned on by how they are made to feel um, important and respected. So it's, it's, it will start with um, uh, just the planting of the seed and then acting upon it and taking care of that seed. Yeah. Oh. You, I, I, you can't change people then you can't change them, but you got to look in your mirror and if you're doing the right things, because you want to, because you love them, you care about them and you just do the things It will come back, come back to full. It's not going to, or tenfold, but it's, just, you know, if you could go with the thing where you, what are you doing for me added to this? It's not going to work out too well. And you know, there's a great resource that we would uh, shout out. And that is um, a woman named D A N I Danny Johnson.com. And she actually does a, a workshop called hot marriage secrets. And we were, uh, uh, fortunate to experience that along with some other business and personal financial training that she does. She had expanded her repertoire to include that because, you know, what happens in the marriage affects, you know, who you are as an individual. And then that goes out your front door to your job and affects how successful you are and all of that. So the center, the synergy of, you know, taking a look at, um, okay, people make business goals and that kind of thing, but what is the goal for your marriage? And so um, it was it was kind of interesting because in the questionnaire questionnaire, um, it was an opportunity to like indicate, well, are, are you currently experiencing issues with your marriage or that kind of thing? And uh, we had to write, well, no, our our marriage is pretty, pretty hot. Pretty hot yeah. <laughs> and, and as Rick said, however, could it be hotter? And so we went to this training. So if somebody, Marion, is, um, you know, feeling challenged on how to move forward and, and uh, you know, re uh, reignite what was the flame um, and uh, or and or, you know, create a flame, um, I would highly recommend uh, D-A-N-I Johnson.com, Danny Johnson.com and check out when her next hot marriage secrets training. You is. know, Tina, that is a great idea because a lot of arranged marriages are starting to happen again. Have you noticed? Yeah. They even have like uh, married at first sight on television. Wow. Now people are lining up by the thousands in wow. every city they go to, to have um, someone picked for them by the psychologist. And you know they're just meeting for the first time. Wow, they need to, they need to have this class to maybe get it going because that is one of the problems I'm seeing. Is, you know, you're a stranger. <laughs> Arrange marriages. How about that? You know, and you you bring up something interesting, and that is um, where where do we where do we get trained to be a marital partner? Where where does this come from? Do we look at our, our parents? parents? Example, we look that's at, not always the best. <laughs> not all, well, yeah. Where did they get their training? You know, it's like the generational cycle of lack of knowledge and understanding. It's like, let me pass down more lack of knowledge and understanding. Yay. <laughs> um, TV and media, 
look at how they train people up in a lot of in a lot of shows it trains you up to disrespect your spouse and isn't that funny right um you know so uh i i think that it's it's as important yeah i got a good point you made there about the when you're seeing that kind of stuff that's that's being negative towards the relationships or people then turn it off because you're it's going to get in your head and it's going to rot your head you, you can't it's going to you got to just decide what you're going to listen to and what you're not going to listen to yeah right. so we have a uh, another somebody uh in facebook I'm, I'm sorry on youtube and that brings something up for me. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube, and all the podcast platforms that are that are important, of course. And so um, somebody on YouTube is saying, oh, this is Karen. She says, what if you both made a list of what you like to do and then find a commonality to do it together, just like a job or your career? You have your pros and your cons on that decision. Nice. Very good. Yeah. Very good point. Yes. And um, thank you, Karen. yes, Karen, thank you so much. Um, date night is an opportunity to, uh, you know, celebrate um, the commonalities and to stretch yourself uh, in the direction of something that maybe your partner wants to do that you may not have, you know, a, a full appreciation for. However, you really like the idea of spending time and growing that relationship. So you lean in a little bit and uh, do a little compromising. So commonality yeah. and compromise are both uh, the yin and the yang, I think, of, of getting closer towards one another. Yeah. yeah, and I think Susie has a point here. Some of it is learned behavior from your parents and you don't know what a functioning relationship is. And that's why they could go to one of the classes that you were talking about. Now, um, is that part of the description down below, Lady Lou? Do, do we have that information or no? Okay, so then um, will you make that available to us so that we can put it in the description down below? And that way, if somebody is interested in maybe taking their spouse to this class, um, right. they can have it available. Thank you. Um, no, there's a lot of, uh, for those that are just, that that want to kind of, you know, kick the tires of this uh, opportunity to, you know, grow, is there's a lot of free content. So on the website that I'll share with you, Lady Lou, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of free content. And, uh, and then certainly we would say it's, 100% beneficial to experience it totally immersed in the workshop, Marion. So the free content and then immersion working together. Good. Excellent. Good idea. Yeah. Now I'm really, I know this is a hot topic and there's lots of people watching and want to learn more about how to have a hot marriage, but I'm more interested in the friendships on fire. What can you tell us about that? Okay, so friendships on fire. Um, again, you know, I think that the the word and joining these together is perfect because it's more of that same thing. Uh, it's more yeah. of it's it's more of uh, the you know. And here's the thing: is that we have uh, friendships. If we say take that word friendships, what does the word friendship mean to you? What does the word friendship mean to me? Does it does it segment and do you talk about acquaintances versus best friends versus, you know, that kind of thing? So I think that what you have to first decide is those people that are close to you in your inner circle. And is that what we're talking about? Right. The inner circle where you show vulnerability and you make the decision to be vulnerable. And that's true hot marriage and friendships on fire is the permission to be vulnerable because there's trust based on mutual respect and it looks and feels and sounds a certain way. Those same rules of engagement apply to your friendships. So understanding in one of the comments was the commonalities and the compromises, right? So communication, all of those ingredients that we know are a part of you know, a healthy um, relationship, whether it's matrimonial or it's a, um, a a friendship, which, you know, there should be a friendship here too, right? All of those rules of engagement are the same. Okay. Um, now, I want the audience to hear me. 
Now, Lady Lou already knows this, and she does this, okay? But if you really want to be my friend, you're going to invite me to that fire right there. <laughs> <laughs> Out in the middle of nowhere, build a fire, and I am so there, and you will be my newest best friend. Yes. <laughs> right. I'm going to light the fire, darling. <laughs> but see, that's it, Marion. Like, and how would your friend know that this new, this person in your life that you spend time with at work or at um, um, it circles within business or at church or um, kids uh, um, after school activities? I mean, these people that we are, are, you know, as part of the sponging of our day, right? Um, the invitation to know you better comes actually from ourselves. Like we're, we're the ones that decide, you're the one that decides um, how uh, transparent you're willing to be. And then through that transparency, then the, you know, the blending and the melding can take place. And then you feel that connection again, whether it's matrimonial or your friend, that connection happens because it's real and it's authentic and it's um, um, it has the ability to then grow. Otherwise, what is it? Yeah. Well, well Lady Lou it lives out in the country and she can burn her stuff, you know, the, the leaves and things like that. And, and she always calls me and says, I wish you were here today because I am, you know, creating this big fire and I know how much you love it. So, I, I agree. I need to tell people more that if, you know, you have a campfire and, and you invite me, you are, you are in like Flint. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start telling everybody. Yeah, A lot of friends too. You think you know them, but you really, most of the time you really don't because you don't really listen. You got to ask a lot of questions and ask listen, questions. listen, right. listen it's about them. It's not about you. That's right. Well, you'll find out stuff about people you never realize because they're That's not right. going to tell you. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that, oh, excuse me. No, go ahead. One of the things that I might bring out because it's what happened to me, I lost my husband. And that was many years ago now. And you think back, well, I could have done better at that point. You know, certain things flash in your mind, different right. scenes. And you think back and, oh my gosh, why didn't I do this? Or why didn't I support him more? Or why didn't he support me more? And you can't <laughs> go back. So start oh, from right. today with your friends if you don't have a spouse anymore. And who knows, you might find a new spouse. <laughs> hey, hey, now back to the, the uh, marriage, hot marriage. Uh, Susie says, sex is also important. A woman going to bed with face cream and flannel PJs isn't a great motivator. Also, a man coming to bed with beer on his breath and not a loving attitude and foreplay isn't a great motivator for a woman either. Thank you so much, Susie, for telling Susie. us that. Susie, Susie, get the drum roll. <laughs> oh. Exercise. What do you call it? Sexercise. Sexercise. <laughs> Exercise. Oh my gosh! I mean, if we're gonna. Uh, talk that three letter word, that loving, awesome three letter word. It's wow. Susie is right. Susie is right. I mean, uh, the hot, the hot pursuit didn't end, um, on the, on the day where, you know, flowers or rice were thrown, right? Like <laughs> it should continue. So treating the, uh, the bed as a, or wherever, <laughs> Tre treating the, uh, treating the sex with um with uh excitement and anticipation um and uh uh planning to um always be available yes, yes. for one another exactly well i know you and rick uh tina are both into the wellness health and wellness tell us a well, little bit exercise <laughs> now that too <laughs> I guess so is Susie, by the way Susie fogerson who's in our audience today uh talking about sex and other things she's into health and wellness too she's really really into it now that is interesting that the two people that are really talking about a hot marriage are both into health and wellness. Maybe we all should like think more about there. health and wellness. 
<laughs> well, because it all ties in. But tell, I see your sign in the background about the active pure technology. Tell us a little about that because we all want to breathe fresh air and clean air, right? Absolutely. Yeah, right now, I mean, uh, another hot topic is um, the, uh, you know, the safety of our shared indoor spaces. Right. I mean, um, and, and really the interest in, you know, avoiding with a 10 foot pole, uh, any invitation to get sick. I think we would all go, no, nope, I ain't got time for that. Oh, I mean, yeah. we, getting sick is just unpleasant anyway. Well, now the real and present issue of COVID-19 is that um, people are either germ germaphobe now or they're germ aware. Either way, they're on purpose about how can I avoid getting COVID-19 or sick in general. And so, um, yeah, what we got right now, we actually just got clearance on it. It's uh, we have an FDA uh, level four biohazard laboratory that tested our machine, the active tier technology. And we're getting within one minute, 90 percent kill on COVID in the air. In three minutes, 99.98 percent kill. That's Say that again, at. just one more time. 98, 99.98 percent kill in the air on COVID. In three minutes. In three minutes. Now that's from a dead start. If you have that process already going on in your home, it's it's or business business. It's almost impossible to to transfer from one person to other. Through the because it's real time. It's all it's it's all it's already going. As it comes out of your mouth. After yeah. that dead start, after it comes out of your mouth, COVID-19 eliminated. That is beautiful. I mean, that's the only, it's uh, that's a big deal. They certified by NASA, been inducted in the Hall of Fame. So it's it's the real thing. It's not a toy. It's not, you got passive stuff. A lot of stuff you got to get to the unit to get the kill. Yeah. By that time, it's too late. You've already breathed it in. You got to go something like a pac mask going to go out there and take care of it. Yeah, and the science is there. It is totally proven. The yes. NASA space certified, FDA compliant lab tested. Yep. And you know that we, we do have a giveaway. Uh -huh. um, so this unit here, in fact, Lady Lou, I think you're wearing yours, aren't you? No, I was going to, but I didn't put it on. Well, okay. So uh, you can see this gal here has on a lanyard a unit that looks like this. Okay. And this is called a fresh air personal. And this is what we were, are um, giving away um, for those. Uh, we're giving away a 50% off um, coupon for those who just simply, there's a link to book a Zoom with, uh, with Rick and I, and just learn more about the environmental technology that we have that keeps you safe in your home and in your business. And so just, just to learn more, there's no obligation uh, to purchase, but to be entered into the 50% off uh, coupon for the giveaway, you just book an appointment. And this unit here works on uh, a little bit different technology. It works on the uh, principle of repulsion. So for those that are wearing their mask, my question is how much better, because viruses don't have wings, right? <laughs> But they don't have little wings. They ride on the particulate. So if you could provide a force field or an exclusion zone where that particulate, you know, hits a, a like an invisible bubble, if you will, and then gets pushed away, how much better then does your mask even work for you? Because it has less contaminants coming into your breathing zone. So we're not Not that nine year old. Oh my goodness. Our, That's our favorite story, story ever. Um, this is 10, 10 now, right. Prior to COVID-19, um, one of my favorite stories about this particular technology is that, a, a, uh, then a nine year old boy who was born with a, like a pulmonary disorder. And I mean, from infancy was wearing a mask. So wearing a mask before masks were like a thing now, <laughs> now you can get glitter masks and, Dr. Seuss masks and right. I mean, this is a little boy going through his elementary school years. You imagine looking very much like the odd kid out, right? Like, why does that kid have to wear a mask? Which, you know, that was pre COVID. Um, so not a, not a nice experience for him, but, but necessary because he was so subject, uh, uh, so easily subjected to 
contaminants. Straight and to the emergency room. All the, time wear the mask. All the time, all the time. And uh, so his mom actually said, well, will this help him um, be safer and healthier? And in that instance, as always, I'm like, you know, look, I know what it does. I know it provides a force field. So you can check with his doctor. Um, but it makes sense that it would help, right? Mm -hmm. Well, don't you know, she took his mask, mask off. Put that, put the, put the personal around him and send him to school because she wanted to know and she was ready and prepared to have to possibly go to the emergency room. And it was about the time that we had the uh, round of uh, flu, just the H1N1, and everybody was getting the flu. And this little boy did not. Everybody in his family got it. He did not. The kid with the pulmonary issues and always, he did not. And he used to, in bed, he used to, because it has a little stand, kickstand on it. So he would sleep with it by his head, right? They have since gone on to get the, uh, over Rick's shoulder, actually, is the, the unit that does the whole house. And um, and he has not been sick since. Oh, well, dang. I love the fact that you all take care of the air for us. So Rick uh, put in my air conditioning unit and heater. Uh, we have an older house and he came in and it, it just wasn't doing the, you know, in July, I think it was. And, and I was like, Rick, you know, help me. And he came in and he and his crew were so awesome that I would recommend if you're in the Houston area anywhere, you need to call Rick Kane and then, uh, and then buy one of these units that can kill the COVID-19 or, and your personal, I, I'm, I'm highly recommending them. Yes. Okay. My uh, my stamp of approval. Yes. <laughs> um, it is so important for our health. It's the air we breathe. And I know you have water units and different things. So connect with Rick and Tina. The information is in the description down below the videos on all of our platforms, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the platforms for the podcast. So connect with them soon because you want to be healthy too. So thank you, Rick and Kate, Tina. We are so pleased that you were here today and we got great information and we just love you both. Thank you for being here. And thank, thank you so much for having us. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.